Shown here is a sperm and egg, which are known as gametes or sex cells. Gametes carry genes, which are segments of DNA that code for traits. In this oversimplified image, we'll pretend the sperm and the egg are carrying just one gene for eye color, even though they must carry, you know, thousands of more. Um, in this case, the sperm is carrying the blue version of the eye color gene, while the egg is carrying the brown version. As we already know, the sperm enters the egg. Uh, this fertilized egg is known as a zygote, uh, which now has two copies of the eye color gene, one from each parent. Those copies of genes are called alleles. Now, alleles can be represented by letters. Big B represents brown, while little b represents blue. This is the case because the brown eye allele is considered dominant, while the blue allele is considered recessive. Dominant alleles only require one copy to display the trait, but recessive alleles require two copies to display the trait. So basically, dominant alleles hide recessive alleles. For example, brown is dominant over blue. So what does this mean? There are three possible zygotes. One zygote might be big B, little b. Uh, that zygote has two different alleles and is called heterozygous. Hetero means different, as in heterosexuals are attracted to a different sex. And zygous, of course, refers to zygote. Those with either big B, big B, or little b, little b are known as homozygous because they have the same alleles, and again, homosexual means attracted to the same sex, zygous is zygote, big B, big B is homozygous dominant, while little b, little b is homozygous recessive. So we're going to put the pieces together to predict information about offspring. First, we'll distinguish between the alleles of the organism and then its displayed traits. Genotype, like the word gene implies, refers to the alleles of the organism and is represented by two letters. The phenotype refers to the actual displayed trait of the organism. So for example, in the first zygote, the genotype is big B, little b, or heterozygous. Then the second zygote is big B, big b, or homozygous dominant. And finally, the last zygote is little b, little b, or homozygous recessive. Recall that brown is dominant, so the first organism's phenotype will have brown eyes because it has at least one copy of the brown allele. The second organism will be brown eyes again. And then the third organism's phenotype will be blue eyes because it has two copies of the recessive alleles. We're going to solve a genetics problem in which we're given information about the parents in order to predict information about the offspring. So I thought I'd start by uh, talking through the thinking behind the, the problem and then give you a method for how to solve it. So we're given that mom is heterozygous, which means that she is big B, little b. Remember, hetero means different. Dad is heterozygous as well, big B, little b. So if you think about it, that when mom's producing her eggs, that roughly half of those eggs are going to have the brown allele, and the other half of her eggs will have the little b allele. And the same is going to be true for dad. So half of his sperm cells will have big B, or dad could have sperm with little b. And so we can check out the possibilities here. So either the sperm with big B can enter the egg with big B, or the sperm with big B can enter to the egg with little b, or the sperm with little b can enter the egg with big B, or the sperm with little b can enter the egg with little b. We can deduce the information about the possible offspring here. Uh, but I just want you to, to sort of get a thinking or intuition about solving these problems. So what I'll do now is I'll show you how to solve these problems. So we scroll down, uh, we see something here called a Punnett square. Um, 
but let me talk you through the steps of how do you solve uh, Pony Square. So step one, we're going to create a key. And that's where we're going to give information about the alleles. So we know that big B equals brown eyes. My little b equals blue. Second step is we're going to give information about the parents. So we know that mom is heterozygous, meaning she's big B, little b. And dad is heterozygous, big B, little b. Third step, set up the Punnett square, which is this image on the right. Punnett is actually the name of the guy that figured out this method of how to solve these problems. Now, if you're looking at the Punnett square, um, basically, uh, we're going to put information about the parents on the top. We're going to put information about the other parent on the side. And then these boxes inside represent the possible offspring. So we can, let's just choose mom first. So we're going to take one of her leos. So we'll take the dominant allele, big B. We're going to put it on top of this box. And then we're going to take her second allele and put it on this box. Now we can do the same thing for dad. We're going to put one allele on the side of this first box here. And then the other allele at this box. Now it doesn't matter whether mom is on the top or on the side or dad is here or over here. Um, so now what we're going to do, this is sort of like a, think of it as like a multiplication table. So for this first possible offspring, we're going to take this allele from one parent and then this allele from the other parent. So it'll be big B from mom, big B from dad is our first possible offspring. Now we move over to the second and do the same thing. We're going to get one allele from this parent and the other allele from this parent. Um, Typically, you write the big B's first, so I'm just going to write the big B first here. So big B, and then we take this allele, little b. And then for our third possibility, again, we're going to take the one allele from one parent, so big B, and the other allele from the other parent. And you see where we're going with this. For the fourth offspring, again, we're going to take this allele from one parent, and we're going to take this allele from the other parent. So these represent the genotypes of um, our offspring, or the possible offspring. Um, now, the fourth step is now that we fill, set up and fill up the Punnett square, now we actually have to answer the question. This might seem silly to write, but you'll see why I say that. So let's go back up to the question. And notice it, it, the first question is, what percent of the offspring do you expect to have brown eyes? And then what percent do you expect to have blue eyes? So if we look at our offspring here, well, recall that brown eyes is dominant and blue eyes is recessive. So any genotype with a big B is going to be brown eyes. So this offspring, brown eyes, this offspring, brown eyes, this offspring, brown eyes, right? And then we can look, the last one, of course, will be blue eyes because that's a little b little b so we can do the, the math here and we can see that uh, one two three so three out of four or 75 percent will have brown eyes and then we see that one fourth or 25 percent will have blue eyes We go back up. Let's see what the rest of the question is asking. So what percentage will be heterozygous versus homozygous? So we scroll down again. So which ones are heterozygous? Well, this is heterozygous. This is heterozygous. So again, let's just abbreviate here, HE for heterozygous. We have two out of four or 50% are gonna be heterozygous. And then we look at homozygous. Well, this is a homozygous. And this is a homozygous because they both have the same alleles. So again, homozygous, we have 50%. And then the final question is asking us uh, what percent would be homozygous dominant, homozygous recessive. So let's look at the offspring. 
So this is homozygous dominant, big B, big B. So that's only one, one fourth or 25% would be homozygous dominant. And then this is the, the only homozygous recessive. So 25% would be homozygous recessive.